What's good? Y'all know what the business is. Your boy CJ Goodfellow. One time for the one time. Y'all know what the business is. Grinding. Doing what we does. And, um, media reaction to Danny Jacobs and, uh, Sergey Devrachenko. I was at a party drinking, so, I mean, I thought I saw the fight pretty clear. Um, it's a good clarity, man, but it was a really good action-packed fight. Let's talk about it real quick. Um, you know, early on, Danny Jacobs knocked him on, knocked him down with a, I think it was a right hook or right hand. Dropped him pretty good. And, um, you know, even with that knockdown, wasn't a difference. You had a uh, 114-113 card and two 115-112 cards, I think, that favored Danny Jacobs. So that wasn't the end-all, be-all for the fight. Um, but, um, you know, Danny Jacobs... Um, he fought Pat. He he he, he boxed. He used his slick ability. He loses athletic abilities versus Derbachenko. I think this was his most disciplined fight that he fought, especially looking at his last fight with uh with Selucky. Even though Selucky was six foot one, about an inch taller than him, and Derbachenko was a few inches taller than him, he fought very very disciplined. I think he had a lot of respect for Derbachenko. I think Derbachenko was unsure of how he wanted to check, attack Danny Jacobs, um, but he eventually got into a groove um, later in the fight. But um, early on, you know, Derbachenko was trying to really walk Danny down. Danny used his uh, slickness. He loses his athletic ability. Um, and he just was rolling a lot of shots, uh, making him miss a lot. And I think the, the judge rewarded him. The judge rewarded him for missing a lot of shots and for making him miss a lot of shots. And, um, you know, Jacobs is a, is a hell of a fighter. Um, you know, he used, he used his, his defensive and his slick abilities this fight. To kind of make Devrachenko look stupid. Then he made Devrachenko pay a lot. Probably from like rounds two to like six, maybe. He made Devrachenko pay to the body. Um, Devrachenko was breathing heavy. Roy Jones was making a good mark of that. Devrachenko was breathing heavy because, for one, he only been 12 once as a professional fighter. And um, the semi pros, he probably went 10 or 12 with, with a few fighters. He was 23 and on the World Series of Boxing. But, you know, one thing Danny Jacobs did is somehow he took away Devrachenko's left hook. Even to the body, he didn't throw that left hook to the body till later in the fight. And um, Danny took it away. Props to Danny. He was reluctant to throw the left hand. He was a one-handed fighter. Uh, he threw some jabs, but it was more about the right hand. Danny Jacobs switched southpaw a lot of the fight. And I told you guys in the prediction video, Danny Jacobs would switch lefty to righty. And um, that, drew Danny, that threw Derbachenko off a little bit, man. But um, Derbachenko continued to come forward. Probably about the ninth, tenth round, maybe the eighth at the earliest. He found the groove. He started working Danny to the body upstairs. He started getting brave around 11, 12 with his left hook. But his left hook was pretty much non-existent, you know, throughout the fight until the end of the fight. And, um, you know, Danny Jacobs just fought a smart fight. He was slick. He rolled with punches. He countered. He made a miss. And a lot of times, what I didn't like about Danny Jacobs, excuse me, is the fact that Danny Jacobs didn't make him counter, didn't counter enough. And Derby Chanko didn't counter enough at times. You know what I'm saying? I think they had a lot of respect for each other for the 300 rounds of sparring. Um, Derbachenko was the aggressor, but it wasn't the most effective aggress aggressiveness. And, you know, Danny Jacobs looked good tonight, man, you know, for the fight he fought. Looking at his last fight that he didn't fight a discipline fight in, he looked real good, man. And you got to you gotta get Danny Danny props because Danny fought a discipline fight tonight. Danny didn't get over – he didn't overcommit. He didn't get out of position too many times. And, you know, he did what he was supposed to do. And I respect Danny Jacobs tonight, man, because – he showed maturity. He showed the maturation process of him becoming from a uh, a good contender to finally becoming a real world champion. And uh, he did that by being disciplined, by fighting a defensive smart fight. Uh, he didn't counter enough, but he did enough to win the fight. You know, I thought he should have countered more, um, but he did. They both was aggressive down the stretch. Derbachenko, a hell of a fighter, for twelve professional fights, he did a hell of a job. Um, sticking behind his power, um, you know, he was a one handed fighter for a lot of the fight. But um, he still he kept working to the body. He should have worked to the body more. But Danny was just in phenomenal shape. Okay, Danny was in phenomenal shape. Uh, Derbachenko fought a good fight with like 15, maybe 10, eight more fights, eight to 15 more fights to keep it abroad. He probably could have got Danny Jacobs, but he couldn't make up for that experience. Danny Jacobs was too slick, too quick. His feet was too good tonight. His defense was too good tonight. He was in rare form, man. You know, finally uh, Danny Jacobs uh, gets that elusive title. That eluded him for so long. And um, I'm happy for Danny Jacobs. I picked him to win the fight. Uh, I think I picked him in 10th round knockout. He didn't get it. But um, yeah, I ain't mad at him. You get the strap. That's the point. He got the strap. And um, Derbachenko fought a good fight. 
I think Jarvis Jacob beat anybody in the world. You know, he'd have been a tough fight for Triple G. He'd have been a tough fight for Canelo. Tough fight for Andra. I think he beat Andra right now. Based off that performance and Andra inactivity, he beat Andra right now. He get Jamal Charlo a good run for his money. Um, as well, we talk about that. But, man, you know, the um, he a good fight, man. He a good fighter. And you got to... You got to get, get props to what props is due. Uh, Derbachenko will be back fat, uh, stronger. Um, hopefully, he can get back in there and fight a, fight a good fighter and um, get back in the world title race. But if he do, you know, um, you know him and Jamal Charlo be a good fight. Even if Jamal Charlo get the strap, he said with PBC, you got to, you know, I want to see him get a fight with uh, with uh, Derbachenko. You know what I'm saying? My girl yelling at my dog. He like, man, I ain't listening to you. I ain't listening to you. That's my dog. You know, he only really listened to me and my daddy. You know? uh, my daddy had him first, but, um, yeah. But, but like I said, man, um, Dane Jacobs didn't call out Charlo. He, and I respect that. You know, for some facts, I don't even want tra- champions. And they're trying to set up a fight with him and Canelo or him and Andrade. That's if he stays with the zone. I think we should be, I'm uh, sorry. I think we should be hearing something about him signing with the zone pretty soon. Or whatever you're going to do. But um, he a hell of a fighter, bro. And I always thought Danny Jacobs was pretty good. I'm happy he got a title now. He got the IBF title. Um, and let's hope that he continue to um, progress. He said he feel like he in his prime. He a good fighter. And, um, you know, I want to see I want to see him continue to get it in one time for the one time. But um, do I feel Jamal Charlo can beat him? Fuck yeah, after tonight. Uh, Jamal Charlo can speak that slick language. Jamal Charlo can punch harder than Darby Chanko, I believe. And the reason, one of the reasons he can punch because he's a little bit taller and longer. He can match Jacob's size. Selucky was 6'1". So, Selucky can match Jacob's size, if you understand what I'm saying. His length can match his length. I believe Charlo could possibly stop Danny Jacobs. I still believe that. Um, I think Danny Jacobs would stop to beat Charlo. But um, that's the fight I want to see. Jamar Charlo, Danny Jacobs. But I respect um, Danny Jacobs for only wanting to fight champions. You can't, you know, deny him wanting to go get the back versus Canelo. But if he's going to fight Canelo... He can't fight in the fight that he fought Devin De- De- Chaco tonight. $365 million man uh, for the zone, Canelo. You know, I beat him on the card. Danny Jacobs must go out there and knock out Canelo Alvarez and dominate Canelo Alvarez. Dominate and knock him out. If he don't dominate and knock out Canelo Alvarez, he won't get the decision. And that's just a fact. That man is worth $365 million. Um, it's going to be hard for anybody to get a decision versus him. Danny Jacobs. I don't think he got the mindset to go knock out Canelo Alvarez. He's just too passive. It's too much wiggle in his room. You know, if it's a way to move around and win a fight, Danny Jacobs is going to figure the way out how to do it. Um, I think the best bet for Canelo being beat is Charlo, just for the simple fact that he get knocked out and knock you out. That's his mentality. I think he don't know no better. You know what I'm saying? Seriously, he don't know no better. Uh, he thinks fat meat is greasy. And that's some, sometimes a little bit of a Similac behind the ears is good, man. And uh, I think he don't know better about you know, about getting knocked out. I think he think everything is Gucci, everything is good. But I think Jamal Charlo could beat Danny Jacobs. You know, I would favor him to beat Danny Jacobs unless Willie Monroe make him look bad or something like that. Um, I like Jamal Charlo over a lot of middleweights when he uh excuse me when he when he get where he got to get to man and get up there. Um, but like I say, man, Danny Jacobs gonna fight Andrade. I favor Danny Jacobs to beat Andrade. Uh, I think Andra is just too inactive. If he get that fight in between Danny Jacobs' fight, then I think that's a good 50-50 fight um, if you get a good fight in there. But um, I think Jamal Charlo knock out them two. I think he beat Can- Charlo, uh, Canelo. But I think it's a chance all of them beat him because we don't know. But I just think his mentality, wanting to get knockouts, you know what I'm saying, is is what's going to be real for, for Charlo, man. You know, he got the right mentality. Um Triple G, man, I'm not even thinking about him, man. He the most fraudulent dude ever of all time, in my opinion. But um, shout out to uh, Danny Jacobs for holding it down tonight. Uh, like I said, Danny Jacobs would be any middleweight. I feel Charlo could be any middleweight. Middleweight, you know. I feel Andrade at the best. At Andrade best, if he going to get acclimated to one season, he'd be any middleweight. You know, I think all three of them. My favorite, all three of them at their very best could be Canelo. But would they be at their best is the question. You know. Because any given Saturday night, you can lose. Congratulations to Richard Progress. I missed this fight. But I did catch the Ivan Baracha fight versus uh, Anthony Yagit. Um, he stopped Yagit around, what, the 7th, 8th round or something like that. Um, Yagit was, you know, was boxing good. And he, <laughs> Baracha was just too powerful for him. Um, his defense wasn't good enough. So um, I think Baracha will fight the Ryan Martin. 
uh, Josh Taylor, uh, Victor, and Regis Progress didn't stop Terry Flanagan. Nobody had stopped Terry Flanagan before. So Regis is stepping up in competition. That's good. Shout out to everybody that's holding us down, man. If you want to make a donation, that link's in the description as well. Also, uh, if you want to you know, contact me, video request, or you got a question, personal question, the link's in the description to Facebook. You can DM me or you can email me for our business inquiries, uh, video requests, questions, personal questions. Shout out to everybody that's holding us down one time for the one time. Y'all know what it is. Good Fellow Sports TV. Raw and Uncut. We gone.